healthcare.gov open for business. Shortly thereafter, the state-based exchanges opened as well, with mixed results. That means for the past year, we have had a vigorous discussion about how to give health care to our citizens more efficiently, more effectively, and at lower cost. And our keynote speaker this evening has been right in the midst of that conversation. Nicole June Maher joined Northwest Health Foundation as the president and CEO in 2012, and she is the youngest president of a major foundation in the Pacific Northwest. Under Nicole's leadership, the Northwest Health Foundation has become a champion of community-based advocacy and creating healthy families and communities. She was born in Ketchikan, Alaska, and she is a member of the Tlingit tribe. And she attended school on the Siletz Reservation right here in Oregon. Please welcome our keynote speaker, the president and CEO of the Northwest Health Foundation, Nicole June Maher. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. I just want to start by congratulating and appreciating the hard work of our 100 best nonprofits. It's an honor to be here, and it's also very special to me to be here tonight. Just five years ago, I had the honor of being up on this stage and accepting on behalf of NEA Family Center the recognition of being the best second best large nonprofit to work for. And we were so proud, and we also learned a couple of things. The first thing we learned was that we were, in fact, a large nonprofit. That was news to us, actually. <laughs> and the second lesson that we learned was that while it was tempting to come back the next year and try to win first place, a different, better strategy was to take your second place award and ride it out for four or five years, and then you didn't risk falling in your stature. Apparently, it's still working for Nea because I don't see them here tonight. <laughs> so I'm so pleased to be here and to talk about one of my very favorite subjects and something that is so important to Northwest Health Foundation and I believe every person in this room which is nonprofit leadership, because that's what this is really about. In our state and in our region, we know that we will not accomplish anything in education, in healthcare, in child welfare, in environmental stewardship, or economic vitality without the leadership of our nonprofit community. And when I think about leadership in the nonprofit field, I feel honored to work for an organization that has an opportunity to have a glimpse into some of the best nonprofits in our region. But also when I think about nonprofit leadership, I think about my own journey at NEA Family Center and the opportunity I had to be part of a tiny nonprofit, a medium-sized nonprofit, and eventually a large nonprofit. Now my path to leadership in the nonprofit field was probably not your typical path. In fact, in my undergraduate career, while I wanted nothing more than to have a rewarding career serving my community and making a difference in Oregon, I actually had no idea what a nonprofit was and the important role that it played in our community. And I didn't know that actually many of our largest employers were in fact nonprofits. I wasn't prepared and I didn't have the skills. I came to NEA Family Center so incredibly excited, and after six months of serving as the education coordinator, and truly through no fault of my own, I was offered the job as an executive director. Now, at that time, I didn't really know how to read a nonprofit budget. I had no idea about the fundraising responsibilities, and I like to say that if I did know those things, I probably wouldn't have applied, and I certainly wouldn't have taken the job. Fortunately, unfortunately, depending on who you talk to, I did take the job. And one of the most rewarding experiences of my life began. I got to be part of an organization and a community who created a vision for what they wanted, decided what their children deserved, and made it happen together. NEA Family Center grew in that 11 and a half period from a $200,000 organization to a $10 million organization, and we went from a staff of five to over 120 people. Thanks. 
It's really important to note that a lot of the credit does not, should not be given to me. None of that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have a united community of leaders who work together, if we didn't have a vision for what we wanted. And frankly, I benefited so much from so many mentors and so many other nonprofit leaders who knew that our children in our community deserve something different. Our children deserve the best. If it wasn't for our elders, if it wasn't for our youth leadership, and if it wasn't for our community creating that vision together, NEA wouldn't have arrived where it is today. And because of that intentional leadership development, NEA is one of the most thriving organizations. And I think it's really easy to talk about the successes and to talk about the commitment of leadership, but it's very difficult to operationalize. Nonprofit leaders are burdened with so many competing priorities, with so much pressure, and really live in a world that is hard to understand unless you're a fellow nonprofit leader. It's also important to note that we have some challenges on the nonprofit leadership front. We know at Northwest Health Foundation, and we know when we look at the most successful nonprofits that have the greatest impact, it's because their staff and their board and their leadership is truly committed to community-driven solutions. We know that when nonprofits reflect their communities and listen to them and implement their solutions, the impact is much more significant. And yet, when we look at the data about who is being mentored and who is being groomed for the next wave of nonprofit leadership, we see a lot of disparity. We see that when you interview and talk with women, with people of color, you actually find that they are overrepresented in their ambition and their desire to serve as nonprofit leaders. You see that more folks in those categories have the desire to work for nonprofits, to manage, and eventually become executive directors. And yet you see at the same time that those very populations are the least likely to be groomed for leadership, to be given mentorship opportunities, and are the least likely to be invited to lead. Now that's a problem for Oregon. That's a big problem for Oregon when you look at the data. Today, Oregon's children represent great diversity. We're not a changing demographic. Our demographic has changed. 38% of our children from zero to 18 are from communities of color or from immigrant and refugee communities. Our zero to five population is majority minority. Our zero to five population has been majority minority since 2011. And this is not an urban or a rural issue. In fact, our most diverse communities are actually rural. Multnomah County actually represents the eighth most diverse county, with six of our most diverse counties being in largely rural communities. So when we talk about wanting to have leaders and knowing that leadership is the most important thing, we need to take a moment and, ha and have some self-reflection on who we are grooming as the next set of leaders and who we are inviting to the table to make decisions. Now, I speak from a little bit of experience. When I joined NEA Family Center, we were so excited to create a diverse and truly reflective organization where our people had the best opportunity to create the solutions that they wanted for their children. And we were very excited. After five years, we looked at their, our data and we were so proud. 96% of our staff were Native American and, the, and over 90% had a four-year degree or a master's degree. We felt like we were really meeting our goals. And then we had an opportunity to talk with our community and heard some very interesting feedback. While they were very pleased that we had wonderfully reflective Native people, they also gave us some great insight. We didn't actually reflect our community. We had brought in Native people from around the country. 
We had recruited them, we had brought them here, and they were making wonderful contributions. But we needed to do more. While these folks were Native American, they didn't grow up in Gresham, they didn't grow up in Park Rose, they didn't grow up as urban Indians in North Portland, and they didn't have the lived experience. Certainly they could relate, but our elders in our community told us we could do better. And we had to have a conversation amongst ourselves and say, it's not just enough to have our community reflected in our line staff. We need our community reflected in our board. We need all of the diversity of our community reflected in our board, in age, in ability, in, ability, in tribal experience and background. We need our entire community reflected in our leadership team. We planned intentionally. We brought in other folks to be part of the conversation. And we expanded our perspective to say, not only do we need our community reflected in our organization, we need them reflected in our local jurisdictions, in other majority culture nonprofits. We need them everywhere, and we need them to be united and tied to this larger vision. Now, I feel very honored to have been part of this process, but certainly a lot of credit goes to NEA's current executive director, Matt Morton, who has really implemented the vision. He's not here tonight. He's probably somewhere giving a speech about winning the second best nonprofit award to win <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> um, but NEA does have a lot to be proud of. So today, with their over 120 employees, they can proudly tell you that over 50% of their employees are not just from this community, they're former NEA participants. They're the youth who grew up in the programs and then went away to college. They're women who've gone through the domestic violence program. They're homeowners who've gone through the homeownership program. And they're participants in the economic opportunity program. And I think if you look at their outcomes today, with a high school with a 96% graduation rate, or leveraging hundreds of millions of dollars of assets, I don't think that they ever would have got there if they hadn't truly said and behaved in a way that reflected that the community truly holds the answer. So this is important because I think the biggest message is this. It's not about checking the box. It's not about just having enough of this ethnicity and that ethnicity around the table. It's about truly bringing those that you are intending to serve and make a difference in their lives to the table and truly listening and allowing their solution to be our solution. And this isn't just the case for culturally specific nonprofits. I think there's a lot we can learn from culturally specific nonprofits, but this is even more true for majority culture nonprofits. Every nonprofit in this room and beyond needs to reflect and be the multicultural community that Oregon is today if they want to be truly impactful. Now I am so fortunate to be part of Northwest Health Foundation and to translate these experiences and stories into everyday life and into our work with our many partners across the state. And I'm so glad to work for an organization that shares this belief. I'm joined by a courageous board and staff an amazing team who are all eyes wide open about Oregon's growing diversity and the need to do things differently. I believe, as does Northwest Health Foundation, that we must focus on equity and on changing the social and economic environments that shape our everyday lives. This focus is somewhat new for Northwest Health Foundation, and perhaps it is for many of your organizations. Since our foundation began in 1997, we have in supported incredible work. Incredible work in healthcare, incredible work in upstream efforts, incredible work in prevention. We've been so proud to be one of the many partners that have helped create the advocacy strategy so that today, 95% of Oregon Oregonians have health insurance. We know that we've supported great nonprofits that are serving families directly and making their lives better. This work is still very important, and yet, as we've reflected on our work over the last 15 years, we can't help but look out and see that while we're proud of this good work, we also know that when you look at the health care, health outcomes for Oregonians, they're not any better than they were 15 years ago. 
It doesn't mean that the work and investments that we've made have not been important and good. It just means that we need to think a little bit differently and be a little bit reflective on the work so far. We also had to realize in that journey that while we were doing good work, we weren't addressing the cause. We were not focused on the powerful fact that the health of our communities primarily results from deliberate policy choices and the limit and limited access to opportunity. This wasn't our own epiphany. We were brought here through thoughtful and open dialogue with community-based organizations, many of whom are actually here tonight. So thank you for your input along the way. These are the organizations that do the work directly with the families and with the young people that we're all so concerned about. And these nonprofits and these community leaders really helped us understand the lived experiences of Oregon families. They also helped us examine the data and think about how the data actually plays out in the day-to-day -day lives of individuals in this community. And these conversations led us to a fierce commitment to equity and a belief that communities with the greatest disparities actually represent the greatest opportunities to improve health. Our belief in equity compels us to acknowledge the social, economic, and political environment that shape our everyday lives. It requires us to examine policies and practices that even if they have the appearance of fairness, may have the opposite result. If we can shift to better approaches, these policies can deliver more for our families and communities. In this way, equity is both the means to healthy communities and an end that benefits us all. Equity also means we have to operate differently. We need approaches that involve those most impacted by inequality. Now, that's very easy to say, but many people ask, what does that actually look like? This looks like a region that embraces our growing diversity by building new leaders and making space for their voices. This looks like decision-making tables with plenty of seats for the families and communities most impacted by inequality, even if it means many of us, many of us in this room may need to stand. This looks like empowered community members sharing their thoughts, voices, and vision for a better Oregon with legislators, school boards, and city councils, and especially at the ballot box. This looks like our nonprofit organizations reflecting the communities most impacted by their missions, and it's important that we have staff and leaders who know what it's like to go without dinner, to live with a disability, or to identify with black or Latino, native or Asian communities. And it's important that these staff are empowered and supported to help build, lead, and engage their communities. This vision for equity mirrors the journey that Northwest Health has been on. We've been working to achieve this vision on our own, at our own boardroom, in our leadership team, and among our staff. We recognize that we certainly sit in a privileged position and we also recognize that if we want to be the best partner to communities, we have to change ourselves first. Through deliberate work accomplished over many years, we've made some progress. Today, our board is majority minority by a margin. Our staff is majority minority by a margin with 75% of our leadership team representing people of color. We've worked hard to engage and bring about different conversations, and we're examining ourselves so that we can improve in serving the geographic diversity of our state, as well as improve our relationship and funding approaches with communities with disabilities. We've also been changing the way we invest in communities. And this last year, we were happy to celebrate the fact that when we made the switch to recognizing that investing where there is the greatest health disparities, we're actually investing in the communities with the greatest opportunity, we were able to celebrate that over 70% of our dollars went to communities of color. We're actively working to better our grant making, but we by no means have figured it all out. 
but we're very committed to the journey. We're very committed to sharing the hard lessons we've learned along the way. And we're very committed to inviting you to join us on this journey. I look around this room at the amazing leaders, and I'm struck by the phenomenal influence, leadership, and capacity that you all have to make change happen. Imagine a future where our organizations together leverage this ability to reflect the communities we most wish to serve and impact. We know that with sincere engagement and diverse leadership, we can reach the potential that our children and future generations deserve. Thank you for your time and your commitment to Oregon.